So if you remember my video on the first Rebirth of Mothra, this gave Mothra her own solo series again for the first time since the original Mothra back in 1961. It was mainly aimed at little girls, with a bigger focus on goofy humor and annoying Kennys than the Heisei Godzilla movies. So did Toho try and change things up for the sequel? Nope! Instead, they doubled down on the Kennys and goofball humor. Now, oh, well, I made it through Gamera Super Monster. Pretty sure I can handle this one. So in keeping with the quick release schedule kept by most of the Heisei Godzilla films, Rebirth of Mothra 2 premiered in theaters only a year after the first one, opening in Japan in 1997. It was also the last movie made by legendary producer Tomoyuki Tanaka, who had worked on every previous Toho Kaiju film since the original Godzilla back in 1954. Tanaka died a few months before the movie's release, and I would say it's sad that he never got to see his last work, but... Eh, I don't know. He got to see Godzilla vs. Destroya before he died. In my opinion, that was a way better movie to go out on. People who aren't familiar with the series might go in thinking Mothra's the villain, since it looks like a horde of Mothras is about to invade the Earth. But the Mothra twins are here to make sure everything's okay. And yes, I am still calling these two the Mothra Twins, even though that's not their name. Look, there it goes again. Yes, I know, it's really wonderful. Yeah, I'll be the judge of that, okay? So just like the first movie, this has a message about protecting the environment, but this time the focus is on the world's oceans. It makes sense that Japan wouldn't want to nuke the whales, mainly because this would probably lead to more whale kaiju. Oh well, it's not going to stop Mothra from harassing Echo the Dolphin, though. Guess I'm not the only one who thought that game was frustrating. And come on, you call that pollution? Godzilla vs. Hedera had it right. You need to get people to care about the environment by grossing them out. Then again, this movie does have some weird gross shit of its own. <laughs> okay, normally I'd make a bukkake joke or something here, but do I even need to? At this point, these movies are practically begging me to do that. Alright, let's switch to something less disgusting, like one of the movies Kenny swallowing a caterpillar. Okay, five minutes into this kid's movie, and so far we've had cum shot starfish and cleavage caterpillars. Never change, Japan. Never change. So while the last movie focused on a brother-sister team of Kennys, this one goes a step further and has three Kennys. And while I'm sure they have names, I'm just gonna keep referring to them as Kennys. Also, while the first movie was aimed at kids and had some slapsticky humor, the gags in this one frequently go into straight-up Tom and Jerry territory. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because a cat got burned. Anyway, turns out the main problem with the world's oceans isn't pollution, it's that it's full of gross starfish monsters. With a monster like that around here, the sea isn't safe for us. Look, we're just the police, not some kind of starfish SWAT team, okay? Yeah, get the guys from Warning from Space to handle that shit. And if you thought this movie didn't already have enough nightmarish creatures in it... That's right, it also has a weird Furby monster with a dangly thingy on its head. Hello? And apparently it just escaped from a Tex Avery cartoon. Okay, listen kid, just because this thing looks like a rejected Pokemon doesn't mean you have to catch it. Just what is this thing, anyway? It's a Gorgo. It's a what? It's a Gorgo. No, 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 that thing's not a Gorgo. This is a Gorgo. What's really weird about this is the official name for this thing is supposed to be Gogo, yet the dubbing clearly says Gorgo, so maybe these things are actually supposed to be the giant claw. By the way, Belvira's back, and not only did she fix her robot dragon, but she also got her hair done. Oh, and she might also be the Terminator now. You're not to say anything about this, do you hear? Give him back to me! Just like with the last movie, I'm not sure why Belvira is considered a bad guy. She's trying to take the fuzzy thing and trying to kill the kids. In my book, that makes her the hero. Target the boy! Damn, if only Belvira was in the Gamera series, she could have saved us from so many Kennys. Belvira wants the Gorgo because it can lead to an ancient treasure that'll enable her to rule the world. You know, you probably shouldn't have just let her go the last time she tried to destroy the Earth. And in addition to leading people to an ancient treasure, Gorgo has some other impressive abilities. Hey! This thing just peed on my leg! That's right, it also has magical healing pee. Sure, why not? 
If Gorgo has magic pee, I don't even want to know what comes out of that thing on top of his head. We're called the Alliance. Yeah, I'm still gonna call you the Mothra Twins if you don't mind. It's just easier that way. Meanwhile, Belvira recruits two extras from the Japanese remake of Biodome to be her henchmen. Because hey, we gotta get more slapstick gags in this movie somehow. Oh, easy there, kids. You can finish rendering the effects later. We've got some important exposition to get to. Gorgo comes from an ancient civilization called Nilai Kanai that sank into the ocean many years ago. And the city contains a treasure that can supposedly grant wishes. Only one problem, there's also a giant monster. The Nilai Kanai civilization created a monster. Its name is Dagarla. Dagarla's a sea monster that's kind of like Hedera, except the filmmakers were on way less LSD when they thought him up. Dagarla's also responsible for creating all those weird starfish things, and if it isn't stopped, they'll end up covering the world's oceans. I don't know what the big deal is, though. If you get stung by one of them, just have Gorgo pee on you. And did somebody say slapstick? <laughs> Why was there an earthquake? Well, so they could do that ladder gag, of course. Seriously, I think that's the only reason that happened. They better hurry up and find Nilai Kanai. Degarl is about to cause the Soviet Union to launch a nuclear missile at Tokyo. Oh, wait, that's a much better kaiju movie. You know, when I'm rich, I'm gonna buy a new computer. I'm gonna eat a McDonald's every day. You already do that, kid. I'm surprised no one's tried to get the treasure of Nilai Kanai yet. Apparently, it's really easy to find. The currents there are so dangerous, even the fishermen don't go there. Oh, uh, yeah? Well, the water looks pretty calm to me. I can see why the kids were so eager to find Nilai Kanai. The temple comes with its own water slide. And apparently, all the city needed to rise again was for three brats to trespass on it. We're moving upwards! Thanks, kid. Well, at least this part has some decent model work, as opposed to the iffy CGI that's frequently used in the movie. Meanwhile, Belvira gets there too. She needs the treasure to finish her outfit in time for Carnival in Rio. Oh, and someone else shows up too. Hey, look! Is that the Garla? We now get our first good look at the Garla, and the best way I can describe him is... he's okay. Yeah, it's kind of neat they made him a sea monster, and I'm glad they went with an original design instead of doing a variation on a monster we've seen before, like Death Ghidorah. But overall, he's not as weird or memorable as some of Godzilla's best enemies. Long story short, I don't think fans are clamoring for Degarla to be in another movie. Hell, we'll probably see Titanosaurus come back before he does. Thankfully, the electricity in Nilai Kanai still works, and it's able to defend itself against Degarla. Nora. We have to call up Mothra. Yeah, good idea. We're over half an hour in and Mothra's barely been in this movie. And you know what that means. Mothra song. Mothra. I don't think that was the right song. I probably should have played Simon Says by Pharaoh Mosh, but I'm already taking a risk with the copyright bots as it is. So if you remember the last movie, Mothra Leo was able to make short work of Death Ghidorah, so a sea dragon that can't even stand up straight shouldn't be a problem. Before that, though, we have to witness the battle of Dumb and Dumber here. You're hurting me! Stop it! Let go! Wow, thank god we're watching this instead of the monster stuff, huh? I'm not sure what the other Kennys are doing, but by the looks of it, they stumbled onto the set of Cube 4, Kaiju Cube. Well, I was hoping this ends up happening to them. Meanwhile, the Garla attacks the mainland, and while most of the population tries to evacuate, this man chooses to stay behind and die with his wife. Mothra finally gets there, and if you're wondering what Degarla's powers are, not only does he have deadly shoulder gas, but it turns out those fins are good for flying in addition to swimming. Compared to the first movie, the effects here are a real mixed bag. Some shots are alright, but in others the screening work looks roughly on the same level as Rush's Time Stand Still video. And I think they both just died. Just kidding, they're alive. This movie may have a pro-environmental message, but that's not gonna stop Mothra from killing all the fish in this river. And Degarla may look more intimidating, but Mothra Leo has so many powers, it's hard to be that concerned. Degarla! Go back into the ocean! Mothra can't touch you in water! 
That makes sense. Water can't be good for all that dust moths are covered in. Although it really shouldn't matter since Mothra Leo has its own Death Star ray. Oh, right, the kids. I guess we gotta check in on them. I mentioned that the gags here are a lot more cartoony than the first movie, but at one point they seem to operate on Wily Coyote rules. Eh, I guess that makes sense considering what we've seen already. Despite all the running around, there's still no sign of the treasure, although these two found an everlasting gobstopper, so that's something. Alright, enough of this. Back to the monster stuff. You've no chance, Mothra. Look, you can never defeat Dagarla. Oh, really? Because by the looks of it, Mothra's giving him a fuzzy, adorable ass-kicking. I may have spoken too soon, though, since Dagarla makes a giant water tornado that has the effect of making Mothra considerably less fluffy. Damn, who would have thought Mothra would end up getting taken down by a serious case of moth herpes? Seriously, is Mothra about to die again? We can't keep going through puppets like this. It's a dead end. Yeah, I agree. This whole plot thread is a dead end. Man, even the ancient city's getting sick of the kid's shit. And so Mothra dies and the kids are trapped inside the temple forever. The end. Nah, just kidding. Mothra ain't dead. The Nilai Kanai playset gives it a hand and drives Degarla off. The kids are still alive too, although hopefully not for long. Give it to me. Give it to me and I won't hurt it, alright? Ah, come on. You can hurt him a little. Give me the Gorgo, do you hear? Or do you all want to die, huh? There, that's the spirit. The kids are saved by the twins, although I really gotta question their judgment here. Elias, that's enough. They said sorry. Yeah, all they did was threaten to kill us. The twins do end up forgiving them, and surprise, they continue to act like dicks. Well, it is kind of your fault for believing them. Eventually, they green screen their way into a room that hopefully holds the treasure, the mystic Fabergé egg of Nilai Kanai. Not only that, but I think it also has the childlike Empress from NeverEnding Story. Hmm, I don't know about this chick. Are you a god? No. Then... Mm, you always say yes to that question. And in case you forgot that this movie has an environmental message, they bring it back for this scene. We're trying to save the world from Degarla. No, to save the world from human beings. But human beings are responsible for destroying the planet. Yeah, I'd say the monsters you keep waking up have done more damage than people. The worst I've seen so far is a couple plastic bottles in the water. Look, these kids are innocent. What have they done? Taking up way too much screen time, for starters. So this is the princess of Nilai Kanai, or a hologram of her something? I don't know. The point is, she comes with more exposition. Many years ago, my kingdom of Nilai Kanai was an advanced civilization. Yeah, you were Atlantis. Got it. And it turns out the Gorgo's actually the treasure. Well, Furbies were a hot item in the 90s. Now that we know Gorgo can grant wishes, I know what I'd wish for, but something tells me it's not gonna come true. Kenny's never die in these movies. And just because this is a kid's movie doesn't mean we can't have a little blood or more gratuitous slapstick gags. But all that pales in comparison to what happens next. See if you can guess how they heal this guy's injuries. That's right, with a Gorgo Golden Shower. This kid's movie has a cute fuzzy triple thingy healing a bloodied man with water sports. You know, even after all these years, it's still nice to get surprised sometimes. Between this and the money shot starfish at the beginning, I'm starting to think they're gonna defeat Belvira by giving her a Boston steamer. All right, time to Indiana Jones your way on out of here. This place doesn't have a boulder, but it does have a fireball. <laughs> Damn, almost got him. They finally escape the temple, but they still have to worry about the Garla, and Mothra's still not ready to fight. It's enormous. What a monster. Hey, fuck you, kid. I'm having a bad fuzz day, so back off, all right? If you remember, though, they said Gorgo's the treasure, and they used their wish to bring Mothra back to full strength. It's a real miracle. All right, if Gorgo turned into the giant monster Gorgo and teamed up with Mothra to defeat Degarla, that would turn this whole movie around for me. All right, get ready to face the wrath of cuteness, fish breath. Not only is Mothra back to full strength, but apparently it's also Moses now. Okay, so if you remember the first movie, the original Mothra died fighting Death Ghidorah, so her kid turned into a different, more powerful Mothra that was able to defeat it. So how is Mothra Leo gonna beat Degarla? By pulling another form out of its ass, that's how. Yeah, say hello to Aqua Mothra. 
You know what? I think I figured it out. With all these different forms, Mothra's kind of like all those weird, different Batman action figures they made in the 90s. Fighting underwater? Well, then you need to get yourself a scuba Batman. And if it gets cold, Arctic Freeze Batman. As far as new powers go, this moth was able to fire X's, which is not that surprising considering what we've seen so far. It also has a bunch of little Mothras that go inside to Garla and Fantastic Voyage the shit out of them. Although this part kind of looks like I'm playing the PlayStation 1 adaptation of the movie. Also, just what the hell are they shooting here? Did they just help the Garla with his constipation? No, a clear colon! My one weakness! To Garla, come back with me to Neelai and I. And so Tagarla goes back to Nilai Kanai, never to be seen again. Mainly because he wasn't very popular. Just remember though, the real message here is to treat the world's oceans with respect. Unless of course it's dolphin hunting season, in which case, have at it, Japan. Where did you get that? A gift from Gorgo. Whoa, careful kid, that's actually one of his turds. And after what we've seen so far, that might not be a joke. I wasn't a huge fan of the first Rebirth of Mothra, but admittedly I probably wasn't the target audience for it. As for Rebirth of Mothra 2, well... Let's just say I really wasn't the target audience for this one. While I didn't like the emphasis on Kenny's, the monster scenes in the first Rebirth of Mothra were decent, so it's disappointing that this movie puts even more emphasis on annoying little kids and slapstick gags at the expense of the kaiju action. And while it was nice that they included an original monster with the Garla, overall he's not very memorable and I like Death Ghidorah a lot better. The environmental message isn't as heavy-handed this time, although that also has the effect of making it seem even more shoehorned in and unnecessary. Necessary. Little kids may find this entertaining, which is who the movie was intended for, but adults looking for a kaiju movie to watch should probably just stick with the Heisei Godzilla films. Okay, two down, one to go. Will the last movie redeem the whole series? Tune in... not next time, because I'm going to do some other movies first, but I'll get to it eventually. Well, that's all for now. Until next time! It's all right, no problem.